everyone and welcome back to the Adventures in Collecting YouTube channel where we take a closer look at the toys we talk about on the show and today... We are taking a look at the new, brand new, NECA Pan's Labyrinth 2-pack here. Uh, this is available at Walmart in that nice Walmart uh, collectible section uh, right now. Uh, I found this uh, last week as of the recording of this video. This is uh, where we are but 12 days away from Halloween, which makes us a perfect spooky season themed uh, two pack to take a look at. So amazing, gorgeous, beautiful box art. Let's see if it tells us who the box art is. Yep, by Chris Longo. Uh, really, really great job on the um, on the cover art and uh, you know and and packaging here. Awesome. Uh, when we open it up, of course, we have our Velcro window, and then we can see. All, the two figures and the really, really great uh, slew of accessories. We've got daggers, we've got books, we've got bones, we've got keys, we've got little pixies, fairies, and then of course uh, we have we have the fawn and uh, and we have uh, Ophelia. So um, really, really cool uh, from a classic uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro film. So let's get these guys into the light box and let's take a closer look at NECA's Pan's Labyrinth 2-pack. All right, and here we are. We have Ophelia and we have Fawn out of the package. And uh, as always, before we get into the um, figures themselves, let's talk a little bit about the accessories. So I always cut out the uh, the plastic insert here to kind of organize everything. You'll see there was some gaps missing here, and you'll see why in just a moment. But um, among the the accessories that you get with these two figures, uh, you do get a series of three um, little fairies, which are amazing paint on them and the detail is really really cool for something so small there's no articulation here but again texturing is really great you get a green you get a red and you get a blue fairy and all of them are painted uh painted really 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 well um along with the other accessories you get a bone Really nice femur there. Um, and then I have uh, the characters here holding some of the accessories. So we'll start with uh, Ophelia here. Um, she's got the uh, the key, of course, and it looks, uh, you know, again, just really great deco on it. It's a very, you know, slender key. I was surprised here the um, the book is excellent because the book not only, uh, you know, does it have the, the really nice tree on the, um, on the cover there, but uh, the book actually opens. And there's a really great illustration inside, um, and, uh, and and even text. Yeah, so really nice glossy finish on there. As you can see, she holds the book really well. She can kind of tuck it under her arm or hold it with, with both hands. But um, while we have uh, Ophelia in hand, hand here, let's take a quick look. Um, as has been the trend with most recent NECA figures, no needed, no uh, heat needed to move these joints around uh just a, a really great job making sure the paint is on uh you know up to standard but also the the joints are moving um really really great work there uh ophelia has some really great uh paint hits throughout uh the, the face is fantastic this is the new version of her face um which is more photo real it's fantastic her hair is sculpted really well of course the, the bow on the back of her nice big bow on the back of her dress as well as in her hair um and she's got a ton of articulation so uh you know she can move her head around you know she's got tilt she's got twist um there is a uh an ab crunch hidden in there and it actually does work really really well uh you get your ball joints at the shoulders um, there is a hidden bicep swivel there underneath the sleeve, single jointed elbow, and your standard uh, wrist there. Uh, onto the legs, there is a, the uh, dress is really soft plastic, but there's no cut in it anywhere. Um, so her legs are, you know, you're not going to be able to get her, her to do any kind of splits or anything. Um, there is a single jointed knee in there, but there's enough movement to make her look like she's, uh, you know, she's running. Um, and, and she stands well on her own without the, the need for any kind of stand or anything. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and she, like I said, she interacts with the accessories really well. You know, she's able to hold the book without a problem. So let's move on to the fawn here, who is definitely the star of the package um, in terms of articulation and detail and 
paint and sculpt and everything. I mean, it, it's just gorgeous. Really kind of captures the essence of the, the character from, you know, uh, from the film. Um, and he does come with uh, both his his satchel and, uh, and, the, and the case here. And I have the dagger, which is, again, one of the accessories. Um, I have it inside the case for right now. But, um, you know, really great job, again, with, with the dagger. He is able to hold it in his, uh, in his hand without any kind of problems here. You know, as always with the NECA figures, just get, be, be a little patient with the accessory, you know, getting the accessories into their hands. The plastic tends to be a little more on the brittle side when it comes to the accessories. So, you know, again, just something to be wary of. But uh, as you can see, he is, he is able to hold it, you know, without any kind of problem there. Um, I have both of his, you know, the accessories kind of draped over him as, as they are in the movie. And what's nice is the straps are shorter on the kind of a uh, cylindrical case here. So like in the movie, and I, I looked up some of the stills just to make sure I had it right. Um, it does sit a little bit higher on his, his waist than the bag. So again, just a really nice attention to detail there. And speaking of which, there, boy, is there a ton uh, in this figure in terms of detail. All of the carvings in his chest, on his head, his horns, his hair. Um, you know, he's kind of like, uh, you know, Groot in, in a sense, where he's got very wooden-like features throughout. Um, you know, he's got different types of peeling bark. I love his feet. He's got the two different feet, the one that's more hoven and then the other one that looks, you know, more tree-like. Uh, he's got a great center of, of gravity here, you know, in terms of balance. It's very easy to make him stand. And and it's awesome. I mean, there's there's articulation everywhere. He does articulate a little bit strangely because he is, you know, well, a fawn. So he's got those kind of backwards um, lower knees, but we have single, uh, you know, single articulation on them. And they go forward more than they go back. This piece will actually stop it from going any further back. Same with there. Um, you know, he does have a, a single jointed knee with a swivel there up into the, the thighs, you know, the typical thigh articulation on, on, a, uh, on a NECA figure. He's got single jointed elbows. Um, he's got a double uh, waist articulation. So he's got an upper and a lower. And then of course his head has great articulation as well. So he can, you know, he can be looking down at, uh, at Ophelia. So uh, how do these scale? So let's just give you a quick idea of how they scale with say something like uh, a Marvel Legends figure. So, you know, if the plan was for you to use the Fawn as part of your horror collection and maybe use Ophelia as just kind of a standard, um, you know, little girl figure for, for background characters, um, I think that works. So Ophelia scales well with an adult size figure. She looks like a kid. Uh, she's proportioned. So I, you know, I think if you were going to be, you know, hiding her in, in the background or using her as a kid figure for, you know, some of your other figures, I think that absolutely, uh, I think that absolutely works. I don't, I don't think, uh, your 112 scale figures will notice the difference. I mean, just make sure that, uh, you know, it's gotta be period appropriate, right? She's wearing a very specific style of dress. And then, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of how he, they scale with a uh, another NECA figure, here is their uh, their newest Jason Voorhees, the the New Blood Jason. Um, and, uh, and and as you can see, here you go. Let's get Cap out of the way. Oh, we'll just move them all over a little bit. How about that? Um, so when it comes to uh, Jason here. Uh, you can see that the fawn is is much bigger um, than Jason, and Jason is considerably larger than Ophelia. So again, I think everything is is nicely in scale here. You know, I don't see any issue with that. This is another great collection or another great addition to the NECA film figures, as well as the um, the horror genre, and perfect for uh, this time of the year for spooky season. So let's flip this around uh, and let's wrap it up. So there you have it, folks. There is your Fawn and Ophelia from uh, from Pan's Labyrinth. Um, once again, NECA has done a fantastic job of making uh, you know beautiful film accurate figures, loaded with tons of accessories. Um, you know these these are <laughs> they're super fun. I mean, honestly, they they always feel like they're they're art pieces, and this is this is no uh, this is no exception. Um, you know, Guillermo del Toro's imagery in the films uh, is always so striking and stunning and haunting. And, um, you know, they, they did a really, really great job of capturing that in, uh, in both of these figures. 
the new, uh, uh, you know, as I called out in the light box, I don't have the old one to take a, uh, to, you know, to, to compare it to, but the new figure um, of Ophelia here has a, a, an amazing uh, likeness, the, the new face uh, printing that they have on an already existing, um, very good sculpt. It's wonderful. Again, the accessories are great. And, uh, you know, as I, as I called out in the beginning here, this is part of the Guillermo del Toro collection. So um, you can also get the Amphibian Man from um, Shape of Water. Uh, there's a separate single packed Old Fawn. Um, there's the Pale Man, which terrifying. And then Santi from, uh, from what was it, uh, Devil's Backbone, I believe the name of that movie is. But uh, yeah, uh, fantastic, fantastic set. Uh, perfect for spooky season. Uh, keep an eye out for this at Walmart and some of the retailers. Um, yeah, but definitely worth picking up if you're a horror fan or a fan of, of Del Toro's work. Um, as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there so that way you don't miss videos like this where we take deeper dives into the toys that we love. While you're down there, hit that bell icon so that way you get notifications when we post new videos and you don't miss anything. While you're liking and subscribing to things and maybe leaving us a comment below with what your favorite Guillermo del Toro movie is, uh, make sure you're following us here at AIC underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter, where we're constantly posting uh, toy photography, toy news, all of the, uh, the great things that are being created within the community when things become available, basically anything we can do to uh, help you find and uh, enjoy the toys that you love. And then of course, the podcast. So Adventures in Collecting podcast can be found wherever you listen to podcasts. Simply search for Adventures in Collecting or hit the link in the description below to get all the links to all the things that I just mentioned. Stick around after the fade for some additional photos here of the, uh, the fawn and Ophelia. And as always, until next time.